Did you catch that line in the gospel today? He could do no mighty deeds there. Astounding for a minute, right? Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, could do no mighty deeds there. What's even worse is that in the reading of the gospel, he kind of wanted to do it. He kind of wanted to show everybody in his hometown what he was about. But he couldn't. Last week, we heard how he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. We heard how he cured the woman with a hemorrhage her whole life. And when he goes home, he could do no mighty deeds there. Let that sink in for a minute. And what's even worse is not that he couldn't do anything there, was that it was because of the people's lack of faith. He goes home, it should have been a great homecoming, but he could do nothing because of their lack of faith. Because they kept saying, we know who he is. He's the son of the carpenter. He's Mary's son. We know his brothers and his sisters. We know what he is about. They tried to put Jesus in a box again. In my own life, I, I kind of get where Jesus was coming from. When I was first ordained, it's tradition that the priest goes back to their hometown and they celebrate their first Mass. And I remember getting up to preach, and I remember looking out on the congregation, and there was the lady whose house I'd throw snowballs at. There was the other person who I'd knock and run away at night. I get it. It's hard trying to preach a, a message of repentance and love when there's these people who know all of your baggage. It's Tiltonsville, Ohio. It's a small town. They know you. You know what I mean? But that's the message that we were called to take. And Christ was no different. He comes to his hometown. He preaches a message of love and repentance and forgiveness. He's ready to cure people. And he can't. Because they don't believe who he says he is. It's astounding. We have the prophet of Ezekiel in the first reading, and, and he's most known for preaching to the dry bones, right? I'm going to send you to this dead house of Israel, and you have to preach to them. I'm going to take their stony hearts from them and give them a heart of flesh. I'm going to set them on fire. I'm going to make them alive. It wasn't easy being a prophet in the Old Testament. You didn't really see people lining up and signing a bunch to do that. They'd get sent, they'd go to the town, people would hate them, try to stone them, and throw them out. It's a terrible life, really, when you stop and think about it. So Ezekiel still went, and he goes, and we hear this message in the first reading, go, I'm sending you to the house of Israel. They're a rebellious house, i.e., they're jerks, and they're not going to listen but you're going to go anyways because I'm telling you to go. Get out of here and go. In the gospel today, Jesus, even after he couldn't cure anybody, he brings the 12 together, and he tells them, I'm sending you out. Go. Get out of the world and go. Take my message and go. And it's interesting that that message that Christ sends the apostles, the message that God sent to the prophets, is the same message that he tells us each and every Sunday. Go. Get out of this room and go. Take my message to the ends of the world. Go. And even when we hear it, we become the world's best lawyers in that moment. And we go, God, I'll go if you do this, 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 and this. Watch out for this, this person, this person, this person. Pray for this person, this person, and then I'll go. But it's on you, God. If you don't do it, I'm not going to do anything. You can't be a lawyer with God. He's going to win. He's going to win. But we do it still. And what does God tell us anyways? Go. We come to church early. We sit in this beautiful place and we come in and we sit down and we immediately start ticking off all of those things that we want God to do for us, right? We do it. It's okay to nod your heads. I know we do it. I do it. We all do it. 
How many of us pause and shut up and let God talk to us? Ooh, we don't like that. God might be telling us to do something that we absolutely do not want to do. But it should probably be the thing we do most. Today and this week, as we go about our day, think about it. God tells Ezekiel, go. Jesus tells the apostles, go. He's telling each and every one of us to go. My prayer for you all today and this week is for two things. One, shut up. Stop asking God for everything under the sun. You do it week after week. Shut up. Let God talk to you. And I promise you the second thing he's going to tell you. Take my message and go. And if we do that, stop and pause and think about how God is going to touch your life, but not just you. With all your baggage and all the places that God is going to send you to go, how he's going to touch each and every one of those lives that you touch. That's the message of the gospel today. Get out and go and shut up and let him talk to you.